Good day. Good day and welcome to Mental Health and You. I'm your host, Cynthia Timms. My guests today are the architects, designers, and producers of a product that I wish I had growing up and still wish I had. I know it can help so many people, so many peers, and so many others looking to find something, find a, a human sense, as they say on their website. Uh, transformations. Transformations.com, Transformation Games, is the product and the mind child of Leslie Robinson. Ms. Robinson, so good to have you on Mental Health and You. Thank you. So great to be here. Thank you so much. What a beautiful introduction. Thank you. Well, as I was going through, you know, getting ready for the show and in the preparation and the research, um, certain things kept jumping out at me. Besides the title itself, Transformations. Transformation implies and peer support, and I guess, in, I guess on a lot of things, going for from something, one thing to something else. Yes, absolutely. Um, what was it that made you? What first off, what is transformations? So and why um, transformation yes. games? I developed transformation games because should I pull up my share my slideshow or? Or, if you like, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so th this can help to explain it. Um, so I developed transformation games because there's really no place aside from a therapist's office for people to come together in deeply meaningful ways to have non-judgmental, unapologetic conversations to process their emotions and experiences and heal together aside from a therapist's office. So we've got, you know, many millions of people running around with no way to process what's going on inside of them or to yes. feel like they have really meaningful connections with other people because they can't be known. That mm -hmm. is why I created uh, my company. And I am super, super excited to be here. I'm trying to change the slide and I'm not able to do it. There we go with my team of Keep It Real 100 creators, who you're all gonna have the opportunity to hear yes. from in a few minutes, because we came together with the concepts of what my games are to create content for BIPOC youth, adults, and allies. Never before have BIPOC people had a resource with a safe, structured space to have all kinds of conversations about being BIPOC in America and much, much, much more so in these times where people are really searching for equality mm -hmm. and for everything for mental health is, is a huge uh, issue. We, we came together to create this. We're super, super excited. And um, how long is, um, Leslie, how long, when did you start this? We started this all about six months ago. We've come a very really? long way. We should launch it in about two months. It has mm -hmm. 15, 15 categories. So there's a whole lot of content in it. It's going to start as a web-based game. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, basically all these games help us to feel, deal, and heal. And awesome. I, here's just a snapshot of some of the ones that are out there nationally. Right now, mm -hmm. the inclusion game is in over a thousand colleges. I don't have a lot of time to go into them now, but you can see there's many different areas, prison reentry, veteran reintegration, mm -hmm. police dialogue, gang life. Um, okay, they, awesome. They break through stigma. They You transform to feeling with people in your own life. There's really nothing else that does that right now. Here's a picture of some of them in action. Okay. Uh, and, and I want to stress again, you know, that we really need to have resources where aside from a therapist office, we can all come together to really impact this mental health crisis that's growing, um, especially for BIPOC people who are finally, you know, really trying to grapple with what it means to be BIPOC in America. So I'm going to pass the baton on to Celia okay. and to my amazing Keep It Real Creators team who have been a brilliant um, asset to this process. And Cynthia, again, well, thank you so much for this opportunity. Well, thank you so much for, um, you know, accepting my invitation. You're talking about keeping it real 100. 
as I bring on the keeping it real. Is it guys? Is it what is it? Is it keeping it real? One hundred. Is it keeping it real? How do you keep it real in these games? And what is it? Thank you so much for being. As you can introduce yourselves, um, what inspired you? What is keeping it real? And what inspired you to uh, do this? Uh, okay, I guess I'll go first. Well, I was, um, you know, Cynthia, you know me through peer support and and really trying yes. to create something yes. for our peers in the community. And what I've been, what I was seeing a lot is black youth committing suicide. Mm-hmm. And what happens is, is there's no place where um, BIPOC, and I'll just say what, what it means, it's black indigenous people of color, yes. BIPOC, is that they don't have a place to process all the things that are going on with them like Mm -hmm. mental health issues, like racism. Um, Now, when I was growing up, we used to sit at the kitchen table or at dinner and we used to discuss these things with my dad and my mom and my brother and my sister. But that's not the case now. Not every home has parents or elders to really teach them about, um, you, you know, um, all, all of these different uh, concepts. So now that we're in social media, mm-hmm. um, it's very different than just talking to your grandmother, your granddad, your mom, your dad. Um, so I talked to uh, Leslie and said, you know, why don't we, we both thought that this would be a good um, opportunity to create a game for BIPOC so that we could hear their voice. Because a lot of times you don't hear their voice and people speak for them instead of them speaking for themselves. So I asked my um, nephew sitting next to me, Javron, and my niece, Jordan, and and my niece, Ashley, uh, and uh, my son, Kevin, to come together and help create this. And they did, and it's been wonderful. Guys. that young man sitting next to you, um, Celia, what has this game meant to you? What inspired you as a young person among your peers? Um, that can go out to any of you, but particularly um, to the young man sitting next to you, Cecilia. Jabril. Jabril. Jabron. Um, it's, it's Jabron. Jabron. And, um, well, you know, for me, um, I've dealt with depression throughout my lifetime. Mm-hmm. At a young age, I felt depressed and I try to think of things as like, I don't want anyone else to feel how I did. And if yes. they did, I want them to have an outlet where they can speak their mind and feel like they're heard by somebody. And I feel like it's very important because we're human beings first. Mm-hmm. So a lot of things in this world are like analytical and mental, but it starts with your heart. And this game gave me a chance to kind of dive deeper back into my life experience and then draw from that. I was really connected to music as a child mm-hmm. and a teenager. And that's what really helped me tap into my heart and also yes. just find peace amongst this world. That's like moving so fast. And there's so many different um, triggers and things that create inequality. So basically that's why I felt inspired to help with this game. Oh, absolutely. Want somebody else jump in. What inspired you to uh, start this game? What inspired you? What made you want to be a part? Any one of you, don't be shy. You know, just a few minutes, just a few million people listening. That's all. (laughs) 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 Don't be shy. What's what's Jordan? What what brought you to keeping it real and why keeping it real? Uh, Okay. Well, hi. Yes, my name is Jordan. And what brought me to it was, um, you know, like, you know, Jabron, I also struggled with um, depression and anxiety, not so much as a kid, but definitely as a teenager. And Mm -hmm. one of the main things that kept me motivated for this game was, you know, especially specifically in the black community, like we, I feel like we're aligned and not aligned at the same time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have a game where we could sit and you know, understand each other and our differences, you know, like sometimes we tend to separate 
each other based off very superficial things. And I essentially wanted a game that not only brings us together genuinely, but also helps us heal and helps us understand more without all this chaos. Because there's so much, so much outside forces that are coming against our community where we don't really have mm -hmm time there's no need for us to be bickering about certain things and and you know sperm specific things that keeps us apart you know i really mm -hmm. want us to fully understand each other and things and this and that and like maybe even if you don't agree with someone's certain lifestyle or, or the way they choose to express themselves you can empathize with them as a person you can respect them that in yes. turn brings us together togetherness creativity that's what we need you know especially in the Absolutely. art community so Absolutely. Nice. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. My next guest, what brought you to keeping it real and why keeping it real? Why is it important for you, Ms. Ashley? Well, thank you so much. Yes, uh, my name is Ashley. And um, yeah, that was amazing, Jabron and Jordan, Auntie Celia, <laughs> Leslie. Um, I really just know that games, when someone thinks of a game, it's the paradigm is playful. You know, they're not mm -hmm. thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to sit down and talk about my problems. Yes. And so the fact that that is the um, paradigm and that is how we usually view games, it is um, and it's really a magnificent idea. In fact, it's um, a generational breaking, um, you know, just healing thing. And I always, always, always want to go against the status quo. That's just mm -hmm. who I've been born to be. So when it came to this um, investment, my aunt, of course, family, you want to help out also because of that. But <laughs> the, the mission behind that, I really, really believe in it. And that's why I decided to join. I think it's awesome. But, um, you know, in my experience in peer support, I, too, come from a background where depression, anxiety, and I didn't always know how to express it or how to articulate it, I should say. Um, to my elders, I came from a background where it was just, you just got over it. You just kept go going despite everything. So yes, I played games as a kid. You know, I had Monopoly and I had Batgammon and I had Checkers and, uh, you know, but the I, but as I said in my introduction, I just wish I had something like this that spoke to me. Um, in my research for this show, I was watching the YouTube videos and I was watching, you know, the families, I was watching the seniors, people from all walks of life. And the questions that's asked in these games really resonated with me a lot, resonated with some of the people I work with on a daily basis as a peer specialist. And I hope going forward, I wish you all the best. I know you're going to be crazy successful. In a, you know, a good way. <laughs> but I want to ask you, in this, in this um, age of social media, I remember working on support lines 24 hours and people would call up talking about um, how social media was just taking over their lives. Always want to keep up with their friends. That became, their whole lives were consumed by Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. How do you aim, I guess the question is, how do you aim to bring young people together? How do you aim to maybe integrate social media in your, in your, um, in your enterprise? Well, I think I can go and speak on that. Um, I think that the biggest tool is your own life. Mm. I think that when people can relate, you know, I've also gone through depression yes. um, myself. And when you can just tell your story, it is it is probably one of the most impactful um, mm -hmm. ways of communication. So I would say that's one way is to just be you and to share your truth. Oh, absolutely. For me, you know, I must say I must add before I go on. Uh, besides the games, I get into poetry a lot. Uh, I get into music a lot. I get into the written word as in poetry, as in writing, as in playwriting. I guess all of those things let me hear, let me to peer support, mm -hmm. you know, my, my anxiety, my depression. So, I mean, again, I thank you so much. Anyone can um, come in. What do you hope to, what do you hope 
will come about with these games and who do you hope to reach and how do you aim to reach them? Um, I'd like to answer that. Um, so yeah, I we were hoping to reach everyone in the BIPOC community. You know, we did make this, you know, because all of us are African American. So we, we, you know, we did make this with like, you know, black people with a special part you know, special mm -hmm. part in our heart, like it, definitely in mine. But we want to reach out to all those communities where, you know, and what I think, you know, the goal for, for, for me specifically, and I believe for all of my team members, is for our players to walk away, you know, feeling refreshed, feeling heard, feeling validated, feeling like, mm -hmm. you know, even if I don't have resources or money to go to like a, a therapist or have, you know, Yes. For proper care at least i have this and that could be a building block for you know getting them resources down the line or just have a place where they feel seen because social media it is a very good um tool to like you know get your voice heard out there but a lot of times you can get like swept up in the yes. thousands upon millions of opinions that you see and then sometimes you'll see something that goes against like your lived experience and that causes you to close up with this game no matter where you come from what you believe who you are everybody will be right. seen everybody will be heard so great thank you i want to ask how has the pandemic how has this new reality we all find ourselves in now I created a free site. I have 10 free mini games at COVID19CPR.com. COVID19CPR.com. There are 10 free games. There's a game about justice. Um, there's a game for loss and remembrance, for healthcare workers to heal together, all, all sorts of things on there. So that's how I've been impacted. Um, that was my gift for the pandemic. Wow. Thank you for mentioning that, Leslie. And I want to bring that up to others too. What type of games? You talked about justice. And the other things that you that was part of the games. What are some of the games? What are some of the games in um, keeping it real? So in the transformation games, the free. I I show them the slides. So I prison reentry, veteran reintegration, okay, dialogue, inclusion, on and on. But the free site has a bunch more. They're mini games, and they're just the questions. So these are all physical games. Thank you, Cynthia. Those are Thank all you. physical, you know, board games and card decks. The um, free site, COVID19CPR.com, especially the one I, I want to let people know about is Loss and Remembrance, where you can have deeply uh, healing conversations about somebody you might have lost due to COVID or lost in, in any way. Um, I think there's a real need for, the, for that one. But there's the, uh, justice, all about justice issues, where we need to process that as well in community. I thank you all. You know, when you said loss, that resonated with me and my work in peer support and just in everyday life, I've come across loss is so much loss, I should say. And loss can mean more than just losing a, a loved one or a good friend. Loss can mean a, the loss of a home, the loss of a job, mm -hmm. the loss of hopes and dreams. Um, social media in the intersection of social, I mean, social unrest and the, at the intersection of all, the pandemic, how that has played on us. So, so the loss of our innocence, you know, um, what does the American dream mean to us in the midst of this? Or is it really an American nightmare for some of us? Well, this is why we created this Thank game. You. Yes. Because um, we realize that the American dream doesn't always try to include us, mm. BIPOC youth. So that means we have to create something that helps us heal. And I think Dubon wanted to talk a little bit about the, the one of the categories, music, that him and Kevin okay. came up with. Yeah, so me and my cousin Kevin put together a compilation of our favorite song lyrics from different mm -hmm. songs that we felt lead someone to look inside of themselves, be introspective. And um, we, we hope that these lyrics can, you know, help people relate um, to, you know, the, the different emotional traumas that they may be going through. Yeah. And it's just to like, kind of give people their own space, just like you said, because a lot of people, um, they grow and they're, they're able to deal with their problems through art. Like you said, mm -hmm. you're into poetry, you're into music. So that's the um, 
poetry, music, art aspect of the game. Mm -hmm. There are one of them. And um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, as I was doing my research, you know, I was, I was preparing for this and looking through some of the uh, features. If I must share one of the questions, it was a family. It was a family talking about, one of the questions was, talk about a life altering experience. And for me, you know, um, it got me a lot thinking. It got me thinking about things that maybe I hadn't thought about in a long time. Uh, I, the death of my mother, how did that impact me so many years ago? I lost my mother um, when I was 20 years old, y'all. And even all these years later, when that question was asked about a life altering experience, because it was her that used to recite poetry to me when I was a young child. It was her that used to read my poetry, my short stories. It was her who I used to be in church on a Sunday looking at public speaking. And I wonder sometimes, how did that impact me? And it's still impacting me. So I just wanted to share that y'all because that question got me thinking in a way, my goodness. And it's something I hope to share. I've shared before, but I haven't shared in a while. So that's how it personally touched me and get me think because I, I deal I, I have a lot of other peers and clients and patients I've dealt with over the years who talked about the love and the loss of a parent but in these days loss can mean so much so many other things the loss of a job the loss of the American dream the loss of your job your career so, so for I me to you, I, I want to thank you. Cynthia, I'm so sorry you lost your mom. Um, I can't even imagine. But that's how your games impacted me. And I just <laughs> I want see. to thank all of y'all for like, wow. And I want to share that with others because y'all got something mm -hmm. here. Even when you don't think it, y'all got something. But as you were saying, silly, I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, Cynthia, my friend. Um, Jabron's going to put up the um, the last okay. PowerPoint. Okay. He's going to share it. Okay. Okay. I did also want to say, Cynthia, thank you for sharing your story. That's extremely brave, and that okay. is um that's something that we're right. looking to help heal. And you know, with the game, you know, like yes. when you share something so personal, you will have a safe space to share that. Yeah. You know, in a community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To uh, the second. So um, one of the things, and, and in our family, in my fa in our family, in my family, we have lost a lot of elders. And mm -hmm. I wanted to bring up my aunt Gloria, and her name is Gloria Wise. And she uh, worked with the youth in the community mm -hmm. um, and has taught me, my sister Jocelyn, and my brother Norman so much. And she was mm -hmm. a person that, that played games with us like Monopoly, mm -hmm. Password, mm -hmm. <laughs> <Remember> mm -hmm. Password. <laughs> and she's taught us so much and I, I want your audience to really get to know her. She is my aunt, but she also was a very important um, figure and leader in the community in the Bronx. Okay. Uh, she passed away in 1993 um, and that was a very devastating part for our family, and we were young at the time. Mm. But what makes me feel good is that she lives in Co-op City, and you see where it says Donzetti Place? Yes. They, we, we named it Gloria Wise Way. Awesome, and okay. I remember my grandfather and my Aunt Juanita, they went to the celebration, and the mayor's office was there. It was a really big deal. So, so I'm 
how I deal with um, loss is to keep remembering them and mm -hmm. keep letting other people know like who my aunt Gloria was or who my dad was. Um, and I, I think that that makes me heal better. You, you never get over the loss totally. Right. But if you can re remember them and have good memories and share it with your family as well as the community, I think that's that's that helps me to heal. I just wanted to put all our names on the slide. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. For, for where people can find you, where people can reach you, absolutely. And for more information, um, contact us at keepitrealbipoc at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, guys, and I last, I want to thank you all for being part of Mental Health and You, and we got to do a part two real soon. And yes. Absolutely. Um, in the last two minutes, anybody want to say something? Anybody has, um, wait, you know, any last <laughs> moments, any last words for keeping it real and what you hope it will um, accomplish, what you hope it will, how it will impact people? Um, I'd like to say something really quickly. I wanted to say, well, thank you, first of all, for everybody that's come together today. Um, thank you, everybody, also for living in your purpose and saving the lives of others because of it. Being courageous enough to get up every morning and just fight for a difference and making a change. Um, I do also want to say that I believe this game will break generational curses and mm -hmm. that's big in the BIPOC community because, you know, it has momentum of years of not only just, you know, slavery or, um, you know, America taking over indigenous, you know, tribes and whatever, mm -hmm. you know, we've, we've experienced. Um, I believe that this is a movement making shifter. And so, yeah. I'm really a movement making. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Guys, we've come to the end for now. But I want to thank you. Thank you so much for being part of Mental Health and You, for that transformation that you're starting, for that healing that you're starting, that restoring that we're starting. That's what we try to do as uh, peer specialists. And all we, we all are in our special way peers and peer specialists doing I'm using our platform to help better other lives by sharing our story. I want to thank you so much. I want to thank BronxNet for being a part of this experience. And from me to you, keep it real and uh, wishing you all the best. Thank you. Until thank next you so time. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so You're much. very welcome. Thank you. Thank you, my amazing.